Hey there folks, Ral here. I'm the sole author of Distal, a new high fantasy D20 system designed to honor the struggles that your characters face over a life of adventure. I'm on the cusp of releasing the first beta packet of the game later this month, but there's already a bunch of free alpha material available already. You can go join us on the development discord or you can go pre-order the game if you'd like. All the links are in the video description. Today, I wanted to introduce elves in Distal. So centuries ago, what we now call ancient elves sent out a clarion call to all the elves, regardless of tribe or affiliation, across the entirety of the distal plane. Their oracles foretold of a great disaster approaching, and with every catastrophe before, they would weather the storm in the solitude and safety of their ancient forest home. That is to say that all the elves retreated back into an ancient city deep within the Ellingwood. So the Ellingwood is basically like a magical, mysterious forest where anybody who wanders into it gets inexplicably guided out. So if you are an elf in the distal, your family before you likely ignored that call to return to the Ellingwood. So you're essentially just out here dealing with the same problems as everybody else. Elves in the distal have skin that shifts with the seasons. They don't go full Eladrin like D&D. They're not fey creatures, but they are a little bit more connected to their forest homes on a physiological level. The spring colors you see here have skin-like bark, and the tips of fingers and ears are like newly budding sprouts of green. In the autumn and winter, those features would pale or shift hue as the seasons do. Elves are dexteritous. They have more movement than some of the other lineage options, and they're naturally more skilled at climbing. They also gain easier access to the elven great bow, which is the longest ranged bow in the game, or the elven blade spear, which is a root-like spear that can momentarily uncoil and strike a little bit further. Being the photovoltaic beings that they are, at the beginning of each morning and noon, they'll have a chance to regenerate a small amount of health so long as they can make contact with an unworked portion of organic ground. So how the day cycle works in Distal is that there are basically three separate shifts, morning, noon, and night. We do this instead of tracking the hours in a day or exactly how long you need to sleep. In addition to the standard features, you'll pick one of three bloodline abilities like all the other lineages. The first is unnaturally quiet. If you're wearing noisy armor, you can still make use of your stealth check using your stealth bonus. Normally, this isn't the case. Additionally, disengaging from an enemy costs only 10 feet of movement instead of the normal 15. If you want to be agile instead of being sneaky, the bow runner bloodline lets you perform long jumps without having to move in a straight line first. And if you ever need to react to a fall, you'll always succeed so long as both hands are free. Lastly, the more animal-focused elves can opt for beast tongue, which lets them straight up talk to animals. And you can add your wisdom to some of the checks used to interact with those beings. Wisdom is also the stat that you use a lot when dealing with animal companions. So if you're a falconer, you can talk to your bird. If you're a magister, you might have an animal familiar. If you're a ferryman, you might have a swarm of insects following you, so use it at your own risk, I guess. If any of what you see or hear seems worthy of further investigation, I recently did a video talking about dwarves, so be sure to check that one out after this one. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and uh, go check out Distal. If you have any questions, always willing to answer, leave them in the comment section down below. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.